The greatest obstacle to learning is knowing. And I wanna to speak to the young people for a second and say, stop looking at these older people that have experience in, your, in life. Quit like knowing all the answers and start being curious. And then I wanna to speak to the older people and say, hey, quit looking at them and downplaying them. And the fact that when we realize we're interconnected and we need each other, Hey everybody, welcome back to another edition of The Process Fixer. Today I have two guests, which is always fun. I have the AI daddy himself and the empathy daddy himself, <laughs> uh, Sam Bradford. Um, Lucas Petty's been on the show a couple times before, as have you, Sam. Yeah. And we're here today shooting some segments, mm -hmm. and I feel left out because you two went outside and came back in. You're like, we just had this incredible conversation, and I was like, well, cut one short and tell me about it. So mm. welcome both of you. Um, what the hell were you talking about in my backyard? You want to tell them, Sam? We're going to, we figured out how to solve the world's problems pretty That's much great. in Let's like 30 it. minutes. Yeah. Well, we um, only have about 19, 20 <laughs> minutes here. So we'll give you the spark notes. To, yeah, please. Yeah. Just give, give me, uh, give me the read AI uh, notes. I'm going to throw some quotes out that I threw out. Cause I'm trying to remember everything, but yeah. the quote, one of the quotes that really changed my life was five years from now, you'll be the exact same person, except for the, the content that you engage with and the people that you surround yourself with. Ooh. Mm, yeah. That is really powerful. And I know that you're big on this content thing. Like you have yeah. a stack of books that we put it someplace, but yeah. we'll, we'll go get the stack of books because I know a, a lot of this is about, and I think you and I both, you know, I didn't go to college yeah. per se, you know, uh, go, going to ministry school is not going to college. It is a, uh, <laughs> fr from a purely educational perspective, knowledge, wisdom, that kind of things. You're not getting that right. exposure. So I think books, podcasts, all of these things are really, really important. Yeah. And then, and Lucas, you're actually gonna do a, a show next week with Tracy Ann talking about how you like hanging out with old people. Because we were like, why are these young kids, always, why does Lucas and his wife always wanna hang around with us? He's like, I like to hang out with old people. I'm like, wait, what? My, <laughs> my first startup was called Odyssey and it was basically about creating technology that would help retired communities mm -hmm. because well when you looked around also now we think of social like facebook as the platform for for older people yeah mm -hmm. however wait at, seriously is that's what we think now <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. All right. yeah yeah which explains why what you, you use what it do you all. kids use in these days <laughs> what is no. it some sort of clip art or something TikTok. <laughs> but at the time Facebook was new and it was what younger generations were using. Mm -hmm. And as we dove into it, we realized that a lot of the technology that we had available doesn't serve retired communities and doesn't serve elderly people. And when you start looking at the statistics. Now are you calling me elderly? Like I just, this has gone oh, a dude, lot I'm farther going, down going, the line than I thought. Wow, right you, now. Just, you are punching below the waist here. <laughs> Please continue. But the statistics are kind of alarming. Mm -hmm. When you retire, and if you retire into nothing, no matter how successful, how much money you have, your life expectancy tends to be like around five years. Mm, wow. Like no matter like what, like what age you really retire at. Yeah. Because what people will do is they'll make the mistake of they retire and then they go on some big trip, come back and they have nothing to fulfill them, mm -hmm. nothing to fall back on, no community, mm -hmm. peace. Yeah. And when you think about it, at a certain age, a certain point, a lot of your conversations about your community are who's died, who's gotten sick, True. who's suffering, what are their ailments, yeah. whatever. And there is a lot of studies out there about having people engage with, with whatever younger, that might be. Yeah, yeah younger, engage more the Japanese, with younger big, people. Yeah, I'm a big yeah. Japanese management fan. We talk a lot about Japanese management in almost everything that we do. The Japanese don't look at it that way. They look at the older generation as this place to go and obtain wisdom. Yeah. It's like I mentioned in one of the other episodes, I'm like, when I was growing up, we either had to go to the library or knew a kid that was rich enough that had encyclopedias. Mm -hmm. We had one kid in our neighborhood, but like the M was missing. 
Like, so, you, so it was like, you know, yeah. as long as you weren't researching a topic with an M in it, you were okay. But <laughs> otherwise, but it is really true. And I think that that ability to obtain knowledge and wisdom from people who have walked that walk, yeah. even though it might've been in a different era, it's still the same lessons over and over and over. It's funny, we think like, you know, you had me on board last week to yep. uh, the other day to talk about artificial intelligence. Yeah. It is the common misconception or problem that like we think technology can solve can solve all our problems. And now AI augments that even more where because it has all the solutions, at least that's what it seems to. People forget that it's human intuition, uh, like having that gut feeling, trusting your years of wisdom, not just analyzing text, which is like what AI can do. Yeah that gives you an edge. And in the same sense, young people tend to think, hey, I wanna change the world, I wanna impact, I wanna yeah. make new things. And they think of older people as an obstacle. Mm. Rather, they are the greatest source because who has more experience under their belt to tell you you know, to have that Been gut there, done, feel. I got yeah, the exactly. T-shirt. Yeah, exactly. right. That's great. So how does yeah. that apply? I mean, you know, Sam, you talk a lot about being empathetic and, and particularly in, in some instances when we're working with doctor's offices, it's about yeah. being empathetic yeah. to people that are elderly, as Lucas sure. calls me. Sure. Uh, <laughs> but but, but how, do, how do you apply that knowledge and learning? Because you came, you're a pastor yeah. at some point, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, you, you've, you've got to be able to talk as an empath in this. Yeah. So talk a little bit about that. Okay. Well, I'm going to throw another quote out there because okay. it's fun. Uh, and then we shared it outside as well. Yeah. And so it's knowledge is knowing that tomatoes are fruit and wisdom is knowing that it doesn't belong in a fruit salad. <laughs> yeah, right. And so I yeah. think there's just so much beauty in acknowledging that like these, these people have something that we need yeah. and that like we can't throw that out. Like we lose so much when we don't engage with that community. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's, even in work, there's a gap there where the, where the people that have been there, the seasoned <laughs> employees, they kind of like look at the younger generation as like, oh, these young kids, they don't wanna work hard yeah. and blah, blah, blah. And, and then the, the young people are like, oh, these old people are stuck in their ways. If we could see each other as assets instead of these problems and just say, hey, what can I learn from you? Like, yeah. what experiences do you have? And like, again, what Lucas is saying, it's like, I can look at the older generation and, and instill purpose in them of like, you're not done. Yeah. There's this incredible book called Halftime. And it's about the, the beginning of your life is searching after like success and you're going after it with everything you have. And the second half of your life is purpose. Like now mm. that you've learned all these things, you've grown in all these areas, how do you distill that down and yeah. share it with the younger generation? It's one of the massive goals of my life is to never stop like learning, growing, and then grabbing that younger generation and saying, hey, can I buy you a coffee? Yeah. Hey, can I, can I grab lunch with you and just share some of these things? I wanna find that younger version of myself that was so hungry, that yeah. was getting overlooked and say, hey, let's go grab a coffee and let me tell you some things that are gonna help you be successful. Yeah, yeah. well, and that, that's really powerful. I mean, we talk about this at the Process Fixer that truth is geographic. Yeah. You know, you, you can't, I can't say that truth is an absolute mm -hmm. unless I've been in the situation where that truth is relevant and be able to actually say, you know what, is this applicable here? Yeah. Because I do think, and, and this, some of this comes from religious background as well. Mm -hmm. And I think so many of us are influenced by Judeo-Christian values in our society. There is a fine line and a delineation between black and white good and evil yeah. in Judeo-Christian religions. But I think we all are starting to learn that everything is on a spectrum. Yeah, Everything's yeah. on a spectrum. There's lots of gray areas. Mm -hmm. And and that gray area might move for you at times throughout your life. It might be situationally, it might change. Sometimes the things, the great Western philosopher Garth Brooks said, <laughs> sometimes I thank God for unanswered prayers. Yeah. You know, Sometimes the thing I want so badly when I look back on it later on, I go, oh my goodness, I am so glad that I didn't marry that person or yeah. this didn't happen or this didn't happen. And then the flip side of that is many times the worst things that happen to us 
on the flip side turn out to be the best things that happened to us. Yeah. So it's really difficult to judge when you just read the textbook. Yeah. Mm. It's different when somebody walked in yeah. and they can go, wait a second, man. Mm. I know you, yeah. you like how she looks, but you don't get along with her. You know, <laughs> I know that you think this is the way that this is gonna go, but let me just tell you, if you were five years down the road where I am, mm. I can tell you that that yeah. might not be the case. It, it's funny, like what Sam said a second ago about giving back in mm. the second half of your life, like that to me is legacy. Mm. People, mm. you know, we yeah. see successful billionaires, a yeah. lot of people talking about legacy. Ironically, thinking about it a lot, I've come to the conclusion that it is simply sharing knowledge. Mm. I think, you know, a lot of people, well, you'll have older people talking about how bad it is that in society you ask young kids what they want to be when they grow up and it's youtubers right yeah. like instead of a firefighter instead of whatever but i was having this conversation with someone the other day being a creator because like there's a difference between an influencer who's selling and promoting things and a creator who's That's someone true. who is getting to follow their passions the reason before you were uh, a police officer was because Everyone else in your family was this profession. Yeah. You felt this obligation. Social media has allowed this freedom of, we used to talk about the starving artist. Mm. There is no better time in the world, in history, to be an artist. Even with artificial intelligence, creating art, I think you just made a lot uh, of artists very uh, happy. Here, no, uh, augmenting and enhancing the yourself. A, it came from the you, AI daddy. He you said just, it. You heard it on camera. <laughs> we all just unlocked a whole new dimension yeah. to art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, right. and so creating, to me, you, what you're doing right now with your podcast, yeah. with your content, yeah. I wish a lot more people who were who are in that second half of their life of it's time to give back Man, he's just would what am i second <laughs> yeah, I, I just turned 50 everybody <laughs> so i guess if i'm only gonna live to 100 <laughs> but i was I, expecting to live much longer but he, he must know something under I know. the bus <laughs> yeah. it's like but wow I, but i do wish that more people mm. would create yeah, yeah because it's just sharing your wisdom your knowledge yeah part of one of the problems in in life is the same problems have always existed. They're usually presented in new shiny wrappers, yeah. mm. right? But it's all like, you're still building a company at its core is the same thing. Marketing, sales, like yeah, no. whatever. <clears throat> and everyone, every new generation tries to start from scratch. No, let's learn from yeah. the people who've done it. I, when you both were so outside, weird. it was interesting because the conversation I had with Tamara Kemper, uh, was so powerful because we talked about this idea that, and you've heard me talk about this, you know, cuneiform, which is the first type of stone tablet that you could carry yeah. someplace. Yeah. You could take information, wisdom from somebody else. You didn't have to memorize it and you could take it someplace else. And we have all these records of cuneiform out there, but they only fall into two categories. They're either maps that tell you where shit is mm. or they're SOPs mm. that say, don't trust the women down by the bridge because they, you know, after three or four glasses of wine, things are gonna get bad. Or don't trust this merchant scales. Or yeah. when you travel to this city, don't stay in the hotels in this area. Yeah. And they were many of them were, were merchant fathers to sons or children mm. saying, here are the lessons that I have learned throughout my life. Let me explain it to you. Now, here's the crazy thing. We didn't build civilizations until we had that, mm. till we had that written down knowledge that wasn't just, this is what my dad said, but I could look back and say, oh, granddaddy Jehoshaphat also said, don't go to this part of town. Yeah. Or grandma, give us a recipe yeah. for how we can cook the bread with this type of wheat. Those things are really important and they do come from wisdom. They don't mm, come from yeah. just, you can't write that down as a 16 year old kid, you have to be, parent or adult to, to, to someone younger. I will tell you right now that in my personal experience, the best life hack to success mm -hmm. isn't coming across a lot of money, isn't mm -hmm. learning and specializing and developing all sorts of crazy skills. It isn't like your, your friends, it isn't yeah. your family. It, to me, it has been going to people who've yeah. gone so much farther than me 
Yep. And it's usually just surrounding myself with people older than me. Yeah. Even if that's just a few years, learning from people who are ahead of me, where I want to go, yeah. that mm. that's the easiest hack to success in so my I, opinion. I mean, I can tell you time and time again, and I'll give you give you, give me one second here. I, you know, my, my mentors were all much older men, yeah. like in their 70s, yeah. 80s. You know, one of my mentors was a well-known billionaire. I learned more from six months of having lunch with him once a week than I've learned anywhere else in my career. Like I still have not unpacked all the nuggets that he gave me yeah, yeah. over the course of that period of time. Yeah. And the great thing is, is then I can take that, apply that to my business, apply that to my world and impart that back into guys like you that yeah. I hang out with on a regular basis, not yeah. just work-wise, but we we get together and hang out and have drinks and do all that kind of stuff. And, and, and I love it because you, you still have the energy, like mine's starting to diminish a little bit, right? So that's why even with the company yeah. we're in together, I'm like, I want younger folks as partners in that because I might have the wisdom, but you know, I gotta go to bed at 8.30. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, please. <laughs> so just the thought comes to mind, right? The greatest obstacle to learning is knowing. Yeah, and I want to speak this, to yeah. the young people for a second and say, stop looking at these older people that have experience in your in life and quit, quit like knowing all the answers and start being curious. Hmm. And then I want to speak to the older people and say, hey, quit looking at them and play, downplaying them. Look at them as an opportunity to pass along this learned experience to them and they need it. And the fact that when we realize we're interconnected and we need each other, we absolutely need each other. Yeah. It just becomes such a beautiful thing. You, you can't build it on your own, right? You can't. You, you, it takes a village, I think, is the is the is the African proverb, right? It takes yeah. a village to yeah. raise a child. I think it's the same thing with business. I think it's with anything. It, it is about, and I talked about this in a couple other episodes, even today. You know, perspectives, not periscopes. Yes. When you are only looking at a problem from one angle and one dimension you're in trouble yeah. because you are going, that's what the word blindsided means yeah. is that it's not in your purview. It's not in your vision. So you have got to have other people that yeah. do this. I mean, this is a reason, you know, a, a, a lot of ancient warriors, when you read, when they learned about fighting, they fought back to, when they got in situations, they went back to back. Cause it's like, we got a 360 now, man, because yeah. the, the best way to get killed in battle is because I'm gonna get you from behind. Yeah. So I, I think it's just so important to bring yeah. all that together. Yeah. I think if you're a executive leader, which is what most of the audience of this show is, that might mean look at your boardroom and say, what's the average age of the person here? Yeah. And and who's the who's the exception? You know, where where is the 28 year old that sits on our board that can give us a different perspective? Yeah. I think most people would be resistant to that because they would say, well, they don't have the life experience. Yeah, right. but they got something. Yeah. They they have an experience with with a diverse perspective and a different worldview yeah. that is very different. I've sat on boards and I've sat in lots of executive rooms where it's a bunch of white guys. Yep. And I'm going, this is not going to, we just talked about this with the Spanish versus English yeah. Yeah. in the break. And I love this. We need, we're going to build something mm. on this. Let's talk about that for mm. a couple minutes. So in what we were saying during one of the breaks was that if Sam was to drop a bottle of wine in English, we would say, Sam dropped the bottle of wine. Yep. What would happen in Spanish? In Spanish, we say, se rompió la botella. And what that means is the bottle broke. We describe mm. the action that's happening and not the person. And because we don't attach blame by how we instinctually just communicate in Spanish, you see most of Latin culture being a lot friendlier, mm. uh, loving, accepting. There's lots of job sites here we, in my neighborhood and they're the funnest people to hang around. There's yes, a bunch of Hispanic yes. guys on a work site. And it, they're and having it, a blast. Yeah, it comes down to how we communicate. Yeah. Like if, if the way you describe every action is attached to a person, then obviously it's their fault, not the process, not the pr yeah, like, yeah, not the technology, so not the thing that's yeah, not it, the actual problem. You know, it really it now drives me back to an interesting point, which Carlos Mencia, who I actually like you, Carlos Mencia. I know you've been canceled many, many times. Please come and be a guest on my show. I think he's one of the most incredible intellectuals out there. And if you ever get a chance to meet or see Carlos Mencia in person, it, it's he's operating on a totally different level. Like he's telling jokes, but then if you're tracking him from a purely intellectual perspective, you're like, 
he's like telling a whole other story that you didn't even realize was happening because you're so busy laughing. Mm -hmm. Very, very intelligent guy. And I know he's been canceled a lot of times for some of the things he said, but I saw him here recently. He was here in Tempe um, and, and Tracy Ann and I went and I thought the point that he made that really, I like this word stuck in my craw yeah, right? yeah. was he got up there and he said, all I hear from Americans is their complaints about America and how terrible it is and how our, our economy is bad and our political system is bad and all this stuff. And he said, tell you what, go buy a six pack of Modelo and go to any job site here in Phoenix yeah. at the end of the day. <laughs> and you are going to hear story after story of people that are telling you how this is the best freaking place on the planet yeah. and there's mm. no better place to be and how they're so grateful to be here and how they're so grateful that their kids are being educated in this system. And he just went on and on. And then he said, and let me tell you something, the day you should be worried about as Americans is the day they don't want to come here. Mm. Cause that means it isn't worth it. Mm. And I was like, and everybody's laughing and yeah. joking. And there was a lot of Hispanics in the audience, of course, yeah. because he's a Hispanic comedian and I'm sitting in the back as a white guy going, Damn straight, bro. Yeah. Like, that's a really good point. One of the things we were talking about outside was one of the things that I've been reflecting on is that poor minds come from poor words. Mm. It's mm. the language that we use to communicate mm. that determines, you know, we talk about how it's your five closest friends, yeah. your community that impacts you. It is also the words in which you use to think yeah. and express yourself. Mm. So, when you choose to say, I can't, you are immediately giving up mm -hmm. rather than saying you will or you should. Mm -hmm. I actually had like showed him a list yeah. all, that I made just for he fun. He is the AI daddy, by the way. He has a list on his website that's one of the best lists out there. It's funny. I still hear people talking about it. I'm like, I know him. They're like, you know the AI daddy yeah. of the list? I had him text it to me because it was so powerful. Oh, yeah. Well, this is probably a different I, list. I, this is, yeah, no, you're talking about the list. You like, of, you like lists, so yeah. do I. So I'm, I'm, I'm game. Anytime you want to yeah. talk about lists. You're, you're talking about the list of over 600, 600 AI, AI tools companies, that yeah. anyone can get for free if they go to my website. See, there AI he is, AIDaddy.io. Yeah. AIDaddy.io. There it is. <laughs> but Picture for this is just me reflecting yeah. on why you should avoid the word can't. Why? Because it's a limiting belief. Mm -hmm. And when you use the word I can or I will, you empower yourself. Yeah. Why shouldn't you use the word try or should? Because it avoids commitment. You're telling mm -hmm. yourself that it doesn't really matter to you. And if you literally say, I am committed to this yeah. thing, holy yeah. moly, the way you show up <laughs> is completely different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you say, but, you discredit everything you've said before. If you Sir say, makes a lot be damned on that one. If you say, I don't know, it translates into, I don't care. Hmm. And if you say, I'll find out. I mean, that's, yeah, that's an employee. Yeah, that's that's, that's a leader in an organization. That is someone who's going to take charge. Hmm. And it's all from the word choices. Yeah. It's a really good point. Yeah. It's a very good point. I, uh, I wish we had more time. We have yeah. very limited time and a very limited window in here. But I got to say, once the studio is in place, we are putting in a new podcast studio down the street here. Once the studio is in place, we're going to start doing a lot more live shows. Yeah. And uh, that means come over for lunch someday. And we'll just all sit down and turn the cameras on and jam and do some streaming. But thank you both for being here. Sam, any last points on that? Yeah. Lucas and I got into a rhythm there. But no. I want to leave us with some very good wisdom here no as, pressure no as pressure the oldest one on camera <laughs> no right now the oldest guy in the room no well i just think i'll follow up with what lucas said of this idea that i saw on on like an instagram post that said um i don't have time for that instead of saying i don't have time for that say that's not a priority right now yeah because it just takes it back into like the power you have the power to change your life if yeah. you want to it's such a great point. Yeah. I think you and I just did a speech, a keynote a couple of days ago called The Pyramid of Priorities, and it's a yeah. new piece of content that I'm working on. But it's it's trying to recognize the, the things that we have to do that are essential to our organization. And we've been yeah. talking a lot about this organizational essentialism idea. The things that we have to do, the things that we need to do to support that. And then there's this last year, which I'm going to tell you, it's like half of our time mm. is in this should we do's. And, and you say we shouldn't use should. Well, in this instance, you're saying, I'm looking at everything on my calendar and schedule and saying, do I really need to be yeah. involved? I'm being critical of it and saying, yeah. is this something that I should, should, do I have to do it? Do I need to do it? And then really questioning it and saying, yeah. is this really valid and important? Yeah. Because if it's not, 
get it the hell out of there. Right? One, one of the like tricks that a lot of business coaches or executive coaches will teach their clients is subscribing to the hell yes or hell no method, right. Yes. right? Yeah. Like just go all in or don't do it at all. Exactly. But make it a clear thing so it doesn't live in your mind and just weigh you down. Yeah. Because and I think I, I'm, I'm, I love, I'm so glad that you made that point. And I think in closing here too, you know, just because you shouldn't, shouldn't do something doesn't mean that other people that, that isn't the thing right. that they love to do. And I've learned this with accounting. Like mm. I can manage my own QuickBooks. Trust me, I can. It does cost me $5,000 at the end of each year to have my accountant go through and try to fix everything that I did. And she finally said to me, you know, it's likely cheaper <laughs> to just let me do it. Yeah. And I'm like, but I, but I, and she's like, yeah, you're not good at it. Like yeah, no offense, yeah. but you suck at this. So let a professional handle it. And listen, when it comes to things like bookkeeping, you, people that keep books love to keep books. Yes. Mm. That's like the thing that they go home and they're like, what did you do today, honey? Oh, I was like typing stuff into a spreadsheet all day. <laughs> they're like, oh, it was so awesome. Yeah. They yeah. want to do that. They love to do that. Just look at yourself. And I think that's one of the things you learn with wisdom, especially yeah. as a young entrepreneur, you want to do everything because you're like, I'm being cheap. And then as you get older, you start to go, what am I doing you know, I, I told Tracy in here recently uh, about hiring an assistant. I'm like, I'm trying to hire an assistant that can take, give me five hours a week. Yeah. Because if that person can give me five hours a week, to, I mean, it's worth their salary five times. Yeah. Yeah. That's lessons I didn't know when I was a young guy, when I wasn't elderly. I think you also point. forget because, uh, you know, you are elderly now. You're not a young guy anymore. Yeah. That a lot of young people cho are choosing to be frugal and cheap because that's the only option. Right. Yeah, right. we could have a whole episode <laughs> yeah. on that. That's a, that's a really good point. <laughs> hey, thank you all for joining us on another edition of The Process Picture. Make sure you like and subscribe. Check out Lucas, AIDaddy.io. And I would really encourage you to Google Sam Bradford TEDx. Sam's the man. Sam is the man. Mm -hmm. Not Sam Bradford quarterback in the NFL. <laughs> Sam Bradford TEDx. His TED Talk is really dynamic. It's really incredible. And I've had multiple people that I've sent that to that were like, that changed the way that I think about things. So thank wow. you for, for doing that years yeah. ago. And, <laughs> uh, and thanks for being here on the show. Absolutely. All right, until next time. You ready? Let's go. Welcome to the process fix to help you see the bigger picture. Yes. Derek names is the elixir. Cut and waste away like scissor. Woo! Got a problem? He can solve it. He's an expert with the process. So for sure you'll see a profit. Bottom line profit. Analyze the work your people doing every day. Expose the inefficiencies getting in the way. Advise you how to automate, outsource, abbreviate, eliminate, innovate. Now there's more food up on your dinner plate.